Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the 5080 and 5090 travel kit and the riser lock bar from Form. Featuring the Form T-Grill, exhaust drive version 2 from Ega, and much more. Just like the first two episodes, this build is powered by the RTX 5080 FE and the Ryzen 9800X 3D. After several weeks of waiting after its unveiling, we finally have the travel kit here in the studio. Historically, the travel kit provided extra GPU support for traveling with your T1 or just an extra peace of mind. This does that and more with a few extra tricks up its sleeve. Forent managed to keep the overall IO shield dimensions and ease of use similar to the previous RTX 40 series travel kit. Visually, the main difference is the grill cutout on the newer version. With the addition of the embedded grill, we do lose the option to mount the car in the T1's two-slot mode as the grill takes up space beyond the 5080's 40mm thickness. In return, it encourages positive or negative pressure to help with case airflow. This is accompanied by what I'm calling the expansion grill, a small black grill plate with a 10mm offset. The grill in combination with the included 5 and 10 millimeter standoffs gives you extra flexibility over the GPU and motherboard offset gap. I still highly recommend picking up a M3 standoff kit as it'll give you even further flexibility, especially in a complex case like the T1. The rest of the GPU portion of the kit isn't actually much different. The support bracket simply serves the same purpose, securing the opposite of the GPU to the front panel of the T1. And if you want to further eliminate the gaps on the back of the panel, they include a cosmetic plate with multiple possible positions. Tools you'll need is a T8 and T5 Torx driver to remove the four T8 screws on the 5080 IL shroud and two T5 screws on the opposite side for the support bracket. We're going with a three slot offset configuration. While leaving the expansion grill on, connect the travel kit's GPU IL plate to the motherboard IL plate with two flathead screws. With the T8 driver, remove the four screws on the back of the 5080's IL shield. Seat the pre-assembled motherboard and GPU plate and refasten the four screws. With two countersink screws, secure the T1's back panel to the combined IO shield. With that T5 driver, remove the two screws on the opposite side of the GPU intended for the support bracket. With those same two screws, fasten the GPU portion of the support bracket to the 5080. Use two countersink screws to connect the case portion of the support bracket together. Once it's perfectly lined up, you can secure it to the front panel with one longer M3 screw. When it comes to the motherboard, I went in an entirely new direction, introducing the first 800 series motherboard to the channel, the ARS B850i Pro. I have a dedicated review for this board coming soon, but it's Gigabyte's mid-tier board that offers some compelling benefits, including Wi-Fi 7 and their Easy Latch PCIe by 16 slot system. As I was sharing in my review, there are some major design issues with this motherboard in my opinion. At best, this board is quirky and odd. And unfortunately, this board is partially incompatible with the riser lock bar kit. The board's easy latch system takes over the bottom right motherboard screw. I say partially because you can remove the easy latch system, but you do risk damaging it. So try at your own risk. Keep an eye out for my overview of the Gigabyte ARS BA50i Pro coming soon. The 9800X3 fits perfectly well in the T1. I wanted to have my next T1 video be with my 9950X, but it's far easier and more exciting to air cool in this case. 32 gigabytes of Corsair Avengers DDR5 6000 RGB memory. I have these set to white to contrast the black side panels. We have the Thermorite AXP90 X47 full copper, a small yet powerful cooler when used in a game focus build. Now let's talk the new riser lock bar. I'm really pleased to see this product. It's simply a hollow bar accompanied by two M3 standoffs to lock down the riser cable, preventing it from dislodging itself from the PCIe by 16 slot. For current and future T1 users, this is a nice addition. Basically the 25 millimeter M3 standoffs replace the two bottom motherboard screws. The riser lock bar expands the usefulness of the travel kit beyond the GPU itself. You can pick up the kit from the official Form T1 website when available retailing for 75 US dollars. You have the option to pick up the riser lock bar itself for $15. A really good price, but hopefully in the future they can add it to the stock T1 kit. Unless the new riser cable slated to come out fixes the issue of it dislodging itself. I elected to use the larger ASUS ROG Loki 750 watt SFX L power supply. I have to admit this unit looks really clean. I have the ultra soft black custom cables from my DIY. I reviewed the new exhaust shroud version 2 from Ega and offered great improvements design-wise and a small bump in overall thermals. 
With improved compatibility with more motherboards like the Asus ROG X670EI and now this ARS B850i Pro motherboard, shallow scoops help in that regard along with reducing the amount of structural support. However, it remains sturdy, but this may vary depending on what filament material you use, preferably something that's heat resistant like PETG. If you're unfamiliar, the shroud helps focus warm air from the GPU and CPU, leaving little space to re-enter the case. Instead of Fantax T30 fans, I opted for the Noctua NFA12 25mm Chromax fans. I really wanted to build with something that was readily available. Lately, the T30s are getting harder and harder to find. These fans are set to exhaust, and I have them normalized at 40 decibels. At the bottom, we have the Form T Grill, a controversial expansion park to the T1. I have two Noctua NF A12 15mm Chromax Slim fans set to intake, creating an upward flow in the case. I had some 3D printed rubber like feet made for the T Grill as it doesn't outright support a bottom position, which does look a little bit rough, but it works pretty well. The T Grill does add a considerable amount of weight to the T1, but looks pretty good in my opinion. I want to see how well the added vents on the IL shield and the expansion plate helps with airflow, including see how warm the rear SSD gets with the 5080 blasting warm air directly at it. It also doesn't help that there is no heatsink on the back, leaving the drive to bear the full heat load of the 5080. I ran Cyberpunk 2077 in 4K, 1440p, and 1080p. In 1080p, we see the 5080 maintain 60 degrees across all configurations. The 9800X3D sees 75 degrees in the stock case configuration and with the GPU travel kit. However, we see a decent reduction in temperature with the T grill around 6 degrees. The rear mounted SSD gets pretty warm. This drive is running Windows and it's nearly identical across the board with a slight edge for the T grill. In 1440p, we see the GPU is within 1 degree of each configuration. The CPU sees a decent reduction from stock with the travel kit and T grill at 65 degrees and 64 degrees. A 4 degree improvement in the rear SSD temp with the travel kit. Pretty impressive. In 4K at stock and with the travel kit, it's identical at 65 degrees and 63 degrees with the T grill. The CPU temps are a bit underwhelming with the T grill scraping by with 61 degrees from 63. We do see good improvements in SSD temps with the T grill, but some may argue that 60 degrees is still way too warm. For the fun of it, I ran Cinebench R24 and it is what you expect instant thermal throttling at 95 degrees across the board. We also see very small frequency changes across the test, nothing big or interesting. We are noise normalized at 40 decibels and get up to 48 decibels with the GPU active. The RTX 5080, 5090 travel kit does more than just GPU support. It enhances stability, aesthetics and a little bit of airflow and combined with that expansion grill it gives you even more flexibility to customize your gpu positioning paired with the riser lock bar the kit now feels more complete it finally addresses one of the most common issues with the t1 the riser cable dislodging itself when installing or traveling i now feel more confident when moving my t1 from my studio to my office the t grill isn't for everyone but it does offer enhanced cooling on the bottom and top but especially the top, which we'll see in my upcoming review of the Cooler Master Atmos Stealth. Altogether, this build feels compact, capable, and travel ready. If you're running a 5080 FE and a T1 and want better thermals and added peace of mind, the travel kit and riser lock bar are a worthy upgrade. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.